Hey everyone, if you're like me and you still have a bunch of old photos, either yours or passed down to you, tucked away in boxes, it is time to get digitizing. You might be thinking, why bother? But trust me, there are many reasons why you should make the effort to digitize your photos. First of all, it is the only way to ensure their safety and durability over time. I really enjoy looking at old photos because they provide glimpses of lies that existed. But physical photos are hard to share, to store, and pass down. It's much easier to store photos in the digital format instead of trying to find space to store your piles of old photo albums. This process may seem extremely daunting, but with the right tools, you can minimize the frictions to reaching your goals. Yes, nowadays you can ship your entire collection to companies to help you digitize your photos. But personally, I feel that they are not that cost efficient. And I believe that the process of actually looking through the photos and deciding which ones to scan is an important step in maintaining your collection. To help make this tedious process easier, I found an awesome tool for this job, the Canon R40. No, it's not the latest Canon camera, but an entry-level document scanner that can also scan photos. The most important feature for me is the ability to scan a stack of photos double-sided very quickly. This is important to me because I need the whole process to be as automatic as possible. The R40 can scan up to 60 sheets of print media of various sizes double-sided at a time. The minimum document size is 2 inch by 2.1 inch and the largest is 8.5 by 14 inches. The Canon R40 is so easy to use that other people in my family can take over the task as well. Power up the scanner and connect it to your computer via the USB cord. Download and install Capture on Touch and then open it. Create a new One Touch button to decide on your scan settings. I prefer to save time and space instead of having large, high quality files. So I decided to scan the photos single-sided at 400 dpi. I like to upload my photos directly to Google Drive, so that's what I'll be demonstrating. But you can definitely just scan directly onto your hard drive. Next, let's prepare our photos. If you have the time, it is highly recommended to actually look through the photos and only scan what you want to keep. Digital clutter is clutter as well. When I scan, I also try to keep the related photos together so the files will be easier to organize later on the computer. Now grab those photos, start your scanner, and let's get digitizing. Load the stack of photos into the tray and hit scan. You should see the scanning in process on your screen. And that's it! You will continue this process until you are done. It's super easy, but there is one imperfection that you might find to be a deal breaker. Although it has an auto rotate function, it doesn't always work properly. It doesn't bother me that much for two reasons. First, because Google Photo also had the auto rotate function. And second, because I prefer to scan as fast as possible. Once the photos are digitized, now you can share these photos with people around the world. You can also take it further and try to restore them using AI technology. Technology. I have a tutorial on how to do that using Photoshop. I'll link it in the description below. I wish I have a recording of how my uncle's eye lit up when I showed him a photo of him when he was young on my phone. Inheriting old photos can be burdensome and stressful. Digital files take much less physical space and will last forever if backed up properly. As part of my journey to have less things, I also scanned those old birthday cards that I had a hard time tossing and those photo booths photos that are just fun to look at once in a while. It helped me get rid of these sentimental items while also being able to look at them if I really want to. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it to be helpful. I'll see you in the next video.